It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we get started, please hit that share button so we can educate more patriots around the country. And before we start, I do want to give a shout out to one of our friends and sponsors, Clean Start. Clean Start is a hand sanitizer that is truly incredible. It's odor free, delivered in a foam pump. It lasts two hours and you can refill 19 bottles if you buy the two gallon uh, uh, starter kit. Simply visit freedomproject.com slash clean, K-L-E-E-N, that's K-L-E-E-N to get your order. Again, freedomproject.com slash Clean. Clean Start supports this show, so let's support them. Today we start with a smackdown of Nicole Hannah-Jones and her ludicrous 1619 project. We have a real historian now going after her work, recognizing that Hannah Nicole Jones is nothing but a radical activist who just wants to blame white people for everything wrong in her life. For those of you who've been uh, not with the times and us talking about Nicole Hannah-Jones and how basically she is single-handedly trying to ruin all of history, essentially. So Nicole Hannah-Jones worked at the New York Times. She became essentially the de facto uh, editor-in-chief by proposing something she calls the 1619 Project, which means the history of America and uh, the slavery and everything else, this country started in 1619. And then she wants to basically say that all of America is evil, we're all a bunch of racists, and so our children now should be taught all about the truth, the truth and the evil of this country. Except she's not a historian. She's just an activist who wants to put out her own message. And that has to be mentioned. Nicole Hannah-Jones is a textbook example of where we are in this country today. She's a woman who is not a historian. She's a woman who does not have the credentials to be a university professor. She has no PhD. She's a woman who was a marginal journalist at the New York Times, uh, more, more than likely a diversity hire, uh, who produced no great journalism during her, or even notable journalism during her, time at, during her time at the New York Times. Then you may remember, she was strangleholding the University of North Carolina. She was demanding a job at North Carolina uh, and tenure, to become a tenured faculty without ever spending one minute in a classroom, without having no terminal degree. And when she didn't get tenure, immediately given to her, she accused the University of Racism. Now she's at Howard University, historically black Howard a University, where she gets to have all the benefits of education without ever being educated. And when we wonder why she's shallow, we wonder why her take on history is so flawed. Actual historians have had to come in behind her quietly and correct mistake after mistake after mistake in her ridiculous, ridiculous project. And yet, in spite of all that, she's still getting paid major dollars, major dollars. She's gone from being a nobody to a very, very rich woman in the country that she says, ironically, people who look like her can't get ahead. Yes, this e country is so, so, so very evil that she was able to rise to the top without and actually make bank. Having but to study anything to, to get do, any yes, kind of a degree. This is true. And and then you put out this 1619 project and historians left, right and center are coming out just saying how bad it is. It's not historically accurate, but <laughs> details, details. It's the New York Times people after all. Details are lost on them. But we at least had one doctor, and I know again there have been many historians, but we had one doctor PhD doctor, Mary Graber, who's a true historian, a true historian. And she's actually written a book called Debunking the 1619 Project, uh, Exposing the Plan to Divide America. And also, don't worry, she wrote a book called Debunking Howard Zinn, because that's the other history that all of basically our children are having to read about now. Hers is called Debunking Howard Zinn, Exposing the Fake History that Turned a Generation Against America. And I actually need to read that book because it's in my generation that that was happening. And, and I don't even know how many different classes the book was either mentioned and applauded or we actually had to take a look at it. And one of the courses, of course, was for my education degree because literacy, we had to in our literacy class to read about 
that book. Yep, and Zinn's books, of course, are all about seeing America through the lens of socialism. Yes, lenses, necessar- lenses, and lenses. Yes, yeah, not necessarily race, but about socialism, which is why from the 70s on, most American graduates from high school and certainly college graduates have a much more favorable view of socialism than those who come before it because they've been lied to about it. And now you move from socializing, using socialism as the lens to view history in American public schools, now to Black, black Lives Matter grievance nonsense. And so at least Zinn was qualified to do what he did, even though he his Uh, uh, program was completely one-sided and slanted. Now you've got people who don't even know what they're doing, uh, getting paid huge dollars to have people come up and clean up their lying, their their lying curricula, their lying textbooks. And so let's listen to Mary Graybar. She gives a historian's take on what's going on. She claims that she was not taught about black history until, um, you know, she was introduced to this uh, fraud of a historian, not really a historian, Lerone Bennett, the radical, and that radicalized her. And she says that she became incorrigible. She would not say the Pledge of Allegiance. She began to hate America. And so she blames America for her family's problems. But you've got this woman who seems to be very embittered, um, blames uh, all white people and her country for um, problems that she had. From a historical perspective, we can see where how the bad policies of the 1960s and 1970s, which produced busing um, pro- and produced these radical um, activists who are writing these false histories, uh, these were being taught in the schools to people like Nicole Hannah-Jones, who has risen to the top uh, by producing this false narrative of American history and weaving it in with her own personal history. So someone who probably could have benefited from psychotherapy is now being exalted and placed on a platform as uh, as a historian whose uh, you know works are worthy of being uh, taught in schools K through 12 and at the college level. Isn't that the takeaway about progressives in general? People who could benefit from psychotherapy being put on platforms and everybody catering to their whims, catering to their whims. That seems to me not just to describe uh, this particular curriculum and its founder, but the entirety of the progressive movement. I do find it quite interesting. I went to Amazon to take a look for, you know, the 1619 Project book. And there's Nicole Hannah Jones' little book. And it's a bestseller, of course. But immediately under it, there was an ad that ran for Mary Graber's book. And I was like, hmm. Well, let's take a look at that one instead. Uh, they're the same price right now, so if I were you, I'd go out and get the one that's actually true. And you know which one that is. Mary Graber would appreciate it. And if your public school is using the 1619 curriculum, you got to go after them because it's a lie. It's a documented lie. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. This next story is about a teenage girl who has some of her own issues going on, and she decided to take them physically out on her high school principal. A 16-year-old female student knocked out her principal with punches to her head after a dismissal that was at a Boston school. Uh, Basically, the police report said that a student's the student's mother the night before had actually threatened the principal. So you got to wonder, why is it the very next day? If mom had issue with principal, the very next day, daughter has issue with principal. And daughter hit, and not only hit, but knocked out the principal for four minutes. Now, we're talking about 61-year-old principal Patricia Lampron. And this is happening at the Dr. William W. Henderson K-12 Inclusion School. It was at their upper campus. They, I guess, have a lower campus. Um, 
I guess they say they were notified. The police said they were notified of a very violent attack that was underway inside the school because they had actually been uh, just outside the school at the time. So an officer went in to find the principal unconscious on the ground. Staff members were around attending to her. And the witnesses said that she had been unconscious for four minutes. Let's listen to the report. Boston police tell us a 16-year-old female student knocked the principal unconscious after punching her in the head and grabbing her by the hair. Officers say when they arrived at the K-12 inclusion school, they found the principal unconscious and the student being held by safety officers who work at the school. Witnesses tell police the principal was knocked out for four minutes. Police say the student told the principal to, quote, stop following me, end quote, before the attack. Investigators say the other staff member is going to be okay. The 16 year old student was taken into custody and is facing assault charges tonight. So Lampron suffered a concussion and a possible rib fracture as well as swelling to her face and the back of her head. Her injuries are considered serious but not life threatening. She was taken to an area hospital. The student assailant, uh, Boston police said the student faces one count of assault and battery on a victim over the age of 60. I like that, throw the age discrimination in there. And one count of causing serious bodily injury, two counts of assault and battery on a public employee. She was released into his mother's, her mother's custody, custody who threat this is the same mom who you know, threatened that say the, the principal the day before you look let me tell you this every day at my university i have to hear about toxic masculinity almost the entire humanities program when it's not teaching critical race theory it's talking about how men are toxic that masculinity is toxic that men by men being men is a great evil in this world that has to be eradicated and nobody talks about toxic femininity we've done show after show after show of punchers and strikers and tacklers and assaulters am i wrong or in every instance, they've all been girls. I wouldn't say every, um, I can't think but of one. almost, almost every, every sure. instance. More often than not, uh, 98% of the time, we'll say. I guess we'd have to go back and double check, but you're absolutely correct. And a, most of the time, then, it is obviously the female student against a female yep. against teacher, principal, whoever it may be. And what happens? Like, nothing serious happens. No one really knows about it outside of wherever that local story. Because that would be a local issue. But if it's one male that's teenage right. hits a teacher, I mean, that's national news. Yeah, where's, and, the, and, uh, where's the national conversation about a very dis... We are growing up a very, very dysfunctional group of young women. This is true. Uh, it, we, 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 I'm not going to mention, yeah. this is not ignoring the problem with boys uh, because we, it's so talked about. Boys are the ones getting riddled up. Riddled up. They're the ones that are being uh, pulled aside and being told that mas their masculinity is female, is, is that their masculinity is dangerous to females. But nobody wants to have this conversation, right? It's the same thing when you have minorities engaging in this kind of violence. Nobody dares speak the name. Well, it's time to tell the fo to, to to tell the feminists to go pound salt. This approach right is not helping young girls telling girls they have to stand by and take it when boys enter their locker room in the under the guise of transgenderism telling young women somehow that they based on the simply on the basis of being female have attributes and traits and characteristics that are noble and virtuous that they need no reforming they need no virtue training they need no counseling they're great the way they are and so when somebody stands up to them like a teacher the, the fists fly and this is not the only story on this we're going to do we got another one following this story Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. So unfortunately, we have to continue with yet another story of violence with a female student against another female this time it's the actual teacher not the principal and this is happening of a teen girl hitting her teacher at castleberry high school in fort worth texas and i'm gonna we're gonna show you a video of the actual incident of course a student got the phone out and was recording it um but what you're gonna see is a white student is very angry and she storms up to her teacher's desk her teacher's black and in the front of the classroom um, and she starts to press the phone's receiver because she wants to call out to 
well, the teacher's first trying to make a call, and then the student comes and tr tries to take her hand away, and then you're going to hear her yell some things. We'll talk about it after. Um, but just know that the student's going up there, and it's about to get very mean. Deal with me. You're right. Have you touched me? I did not touch you. So I asked you to move. Hey, will you go here and tell the 18 let's sit for me? Yes, so it was kind of hard to see or hear what she was saying, but you got the general gist. Basically, what was happening is uh, the teacher, as you saw, was like, no, 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 and very calm. Like, she was saying, no, you know, you can't be doing this. And then the student yells, deal with me. And the teacher says, you're right, and says, because you touched me, I did not touch you, which is very smart on that teacher mm -hmm. to say, to announce that, and hopefully, again, someone... She probably knew that a student was taping this to know. And uh, so then the student is very mad and she yells, I'm calling my mama. You ain't about to F me up, B word. And then you saw the next thing, um, the student's actually talking to her mom on the phone saying, I need you to get over here because this teacher is about to get F'd up if she doesn't get the F away from me. Hmm. See, now I... And then, oh, one more thing, one more, oh, we got more from her because it was hard to hear. I, I couldn't hear it the first time around. Then she says, uh, you want to talk to her because she's black and she's effing pissing me off right now. And then she throws the phone. Yeah, that, I mean, strategically, if you're going to do that kind of stuff, don't throw the black comment in there. I mean, that right there is going to, any, like, any, cre any street cred you may have had just went out the window. But I don't believe she actually called her mother because to get, to get an outside line, you can't just. I was super impressed. I was like, wait a minute, that's a, a, an actual phone. Right. Student, they don't know phones. <laughs> the no. kids don't know the phones no. and pushing buttons. So I, I do question that as well. And I guarantee you, you have to hit some kind of a number to get an outside line. There's an outside line, line yeah. So I think, she, and the fact that she threw the phone suggests that she wasn't really talking to Correct. his mom. In fact, what she was angry about is that her mother was going to be notified, right? She said, deal with me. Don't you call my mother. You deal with me. I'm not going to have this B F me up with my mother, basically, is what she said. So to turn around and say that she was calling her mother, I think it was a drama queen act, and I don't think, right? And then when she throws this, the phone at the, the, the teacher as well, teacher handled it about as best as you can. Mm -hmm. But you also, during times like that, you wonder, I mean, uh, what's, the, what's going through the mind of the class, right? Uh, there They're wasn't giggling. a lot of backroom chatter, yeah. you know? Somebody had time to pull out a camera, though, and, and uh, put it on tape. Well, in the, the question, obviously, with all these things, it, clearly this student has some mental issues to, to work out. Uh, there is something is it, going on. Or is it on. just a spoiled brat? It, it, based on what, it, to me, and, and I'm not a psychologist, but there, it looked like there was something else the way she stormed up and the way she was carrying herself. But a, either way, and we talked about this in the last segment, the toxicity happening with females across the board, K through graduate degree, there, it, it's known, like women, females know, I can get away with things more because I, well, it, it's not only because I've been told that I have to be more masculine, but I know that the boys have been told they can't do anything to me. So I'm in control. Like there's that attitude and I've heard it from people my own age and the students who are younger, like they know teen girls are very in tune with what they can do and what they can't do. They've been doing it for decades, but it's getting worse because we're now just being like, okay, you can go on and, and it's okay to hit people and curse and say derogatory things to them. And they have no consequences. There was a whole lot of entitlement in every aspect of her behavior. And, and the way they teach, treat, treat teachers is stunning too. This attitude that, you know, your job here is to make me happy. Your job here is not to teach me anything. I owe you no respect or discipline. Uh, the school statement, the, there was a school statement from Castleberry ISD, and it says, quote, we are aware of and greatly disturbed by videos of an incident circulating social media in which a student becomes aggressive, I would 
say the least, toward an African-American teacher, including attacking the teacher physically and making racially charged comments and threats. So of course you knew the progressive staff was not gonna ignore, ignore that. Because criminal activity occurred, the district immediately turned this matter over to law enforcement. In addition, the, the district is currently conducting its own investigation, including reviewing video footage and taking statements of those present. So good for the school, I suppose, but interesting. They got law enforcement involved. Let me just po mm -hmm. posit you a question. Yeah, I know where you're going. What if the teacher was a white woman and the offending student was a black girl and she was immediately turned over to the law, law enforcement? What do you think the H H Hannah Joneses of the world would say about that use of police involvement? Well, not only that, the statement just would be, we are investigating and there would be no other like, comment. Exactly we wouldn't right. know any more details than that. It would just be, well, uh, it's a matter of investigation. Right. We're not allowed to speak to it at this time. Okay, it's time now for instant classics. Some instant classics on a uh, otherwise violent day in terms of uh, what we've been talking about in the shows. So we have an image of violence. Take a look at this. We talked about the same image yesterday from a different painter. This time, the scene is painted by Michelangelo Caravaggio. So take a look at the image there. This is the Christ at the Column, AKA the flagellation of Christ. This one is 60, 70 years after the one we saw yesterday. It's uh, 1607, 1606. It's a painting by the Italian Baroque painter Caravaggio. It's now in the Musée, Musée de Beaux-Arts uh, in Rouen, France. This is one of two versions of the flagellation that were painted by Caravaggio. We'll show you the next one tomorrow. And you can see how the image uh, has, a, been transported after 60, 70 years in the hands of the master Caravaggio. The scene was traditionally depicted in front of a column, and you can see the column behind, uh, possibly alluding to the judgment hall of Pilate. The snub-nosed torturer on the far right is recognizably the very same figure who modeled for Caravaggio as one of the torturers in his other flagellation of, flagellation of Christ, and as the executioner in Caravaggio's picture, Salomone, uh, Salome with the head of John the Baptist. Caravaggio has flattened the entire space, reduced the figures to a minimum, and used light to direct attention to the crucial parts of his comp composition, Christ's face and torso, the faces of the torturers, and the hand holding the out of frame whip. So you can see there, right? Uh, another take on this image, we'll see a third tomorrow. And here you've got that uh, remarkable lean of Christ leaning back forward as they tie him backwards, his arms behind his hands to the column. And the whip, which is outside uh, on the top of right hand corner, the whip, the handle's there in the hand of the, ex of the torturer, but the whip itself is beyond the frame of the picture. This has been telescope scoped. It's a really uh, intense view at a stunning act of violence but done in a very pictorial sense. If you have a question for Dr. Duke and Katie, please send it our way by emailing askduke at fpeusa.org. And that wraps up this show for Freedom Project. I'm Katie and he's Dr. Duke. Until next time, stay educated friends and let us help you.